so it begins. An epic story of mankind, inspired by real events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief. Happen in every dimension, but I am sustaining restitution and relief. And there'll be a case. Praise the Lord. Uh, greetings to you in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. I um, want to thank you for sharing with us and being a part of this program. Um, we're so glad that you've taken the time out of your busy schedule to share with us. Uh, we here at Grace Congregational Church are delighted that the Father would uh, allow us to be used um, in this day and time for the healing and the restoration and the uplift of the people of God. And so we thank you for sharing. We want you to know that there are intercessors, people who are praying for you. They want to see you succeed in doing the will of God and walking in agreement with the word and the plan of God for your life. Um, and so we are uh, faithfully praying for you. Uh, so be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. Um, embrace this word, embrace what the spirit of the Lord is doing in your life. Um, humble yourself. Uh, submit yourself and be patient. Don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't, don't be hasty. Um, you don't have to uh, try to impress anyone. Just take your time and work it out day by day, experience by experience, and watch the glory of the Lord uh, continue to rise upon your life. I want to thank those of you have ta who've taken the time to write us, call us, and especially those of you who have taken the time to come and to visit and to share with us in our worship services or in our Bible classes. Um, we're delighted that you would uh, come and be a part of a live service and, and just praise the Lord and worship God and enjoy the presence of the Lord with us. Uh, indeed, I'm like the psalmist who said, Oh, come and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So we are always ecstatic about those opportunities of, of worship and celebration of our God with our brothers and sisters. So please uh, come on out and share with us. If you'll go to our webpage, you'll find out all of the pertinent information as to where we are, how to get in contact with us, and to come and be a part of those services. I want to continue uh, in our series dealing with the benefits of salvation. It is high time for the saints of the Most High God to lift their heads up, to throw their shoulders back, to walk upright, proud and glad about being saved and sanctified. Glad and ecstatic about what the Father is doing in our lives. Glad about uh, our lifestyle, uh, glad about our living, our, everything about us uh, is profitable to us, and there are benefits to salvation. Uh, many times we um, are led to believe that somehow um, being saved is some kind of second-class life, when the truth of the matter is it is true life, it is real life. It is life eternal. It is life abundantly. Jesus said in John 10, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Now, mind you, he did not say the abundance of things in life because the scripture also tells us that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possess. So we must redefine life according to the plan and purpose of God. We must define our, our livingness by the word of God and not by the standards that are made up by folks who do not know God nor his ways. And so uh, when you are saved, you and I are in the body of Christ. You and I have embraced the Lord Jesus. We've come in the door. Um, and as Paul said in Romans, the first chapter, that this gospel that was preached, this gospel of Christ, this message of the kingdom, this message, this good news that he brought, when we believe it, he said, it's the power of God. And we talked about that in, 
And uh, now this week we want to share, or in this program, we want to share the second facet of what we talked about as being benefits. This is just one in a long series of Bible studies and preached messages that we have preached and taught at Grace. Um, and, and we just, I encourage you to go, in, go into the scriptures and just begin to look at all of the things that are yours as a son and daughter of God as a result of being saved, being in Christ Jesus. The list is phenomenal. And those benefits are tremendous. And they outweigh and override anything that the world has to offer. So let's look at this. Last week, last program I told you, we were talking about the benefits and I said there were three of them. Uh, I said the first one was that we are charged by the power of God and we dealt with that. This, this one is we have access to God's manifested presence. I want to talk about that. And then the third one will be, if you'll join us in the next program, we express the will of God in the earth. But today I want to talk about we have access to God's manifested presence. Amen. One of the things about salvation and a restored relationship with God is that, uh, as the scripture says now, uh, that we have uh, drawn near to him. He has drawn near to us. Um, we have been restored through Christ Jesus. And that which he restored us to was right standing, right relationship with God. And it's a relationship that man had prior to disobedience and sin entering in. It's a kind of relationship that in Genesis is described between Adam and God by saying, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Um, for many, many folks, uh, um, their perception of God and their relationship with God is that I'm here and God is somewhere out past the seventh heaven somewhere or way off somewhere and uh, you know I'll never never really experience that there is just this vastness of space and time in between us and so I don't know if I'll ever really understand that's not true God is very much present with us as a result of salvation that's what it brings that's a benefit Man, can't, can't you see how comforting that is to understand that God is present. I'm in his presence. And so um, we have access to a manifested presence, not to some ephemeral thought about a God or the God or some um, vain philosophy, but no, we have access to a manifested presence. That means a very present help. As the scripture says, that our God is a very present help in the time of need or difficulties, our troubles, just in walking with us. And so, if you'll turn to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 19 through 23 would be... Um, great for, for you to read, but I just want to highlight um, verse 19. He says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. If you know anything about the tabernacle, the tabernacle was divided in three parts, the outer court, the inner courts, and the holy of holies. And in the Holy of Holies was the presence of God. And according to outline and pattern, the only one that was really granted access into the Holy of Holies was the high priest. And that was only done once a year at atonement time. And he, he took with him the sins of the whole nation of all of the people. And yet he is a type, that is a type of Jesus, the Messiah, who being the Lamb of God, through his death, 
went into the Holy of Holies, went into the absolute presence of God and made atoning sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. And the sacrifice, here is the rejoicing part. Here's a part to get happy and to shout about. Here's a part to make sure that we don't walk in condemnation, that we don't walk in discouragement or despair. Here's a part that should um, empower us to rejoice always, as the scripture says. You know what it is? He went in and he offered the sacrifice, and the scripture says, that the sacrifice was accepted. Man, that's, that's come on, that's, that's, that's shouting there, that's shouting there, that's, that's rejoicing there. That the sacrifice was accepted. Scripture says that it pleased God to bruise him, to put our sin and to um, take out his strife and wrath upon him. It pleased God to do that. And God accepted that as the sacrifice for you and I. Man, and that restores us and gives us power. And now we have the opportunity to experience God for ourselves in a manifested way, not, not feeling for him, wondering if he's here, feeling to the left or the right, wonder, no, he is here, his presence, I'm in his presence. I experienced that as a result of salvation. And I walk in that assurance. I walk in that confidence. Let's keep going. You know what was in, in the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, which again manifested or uh, uh, it represented the manifested presence of God. And so um, the blood that cleansed us became as a result, Jesus' blood, God's elect, his chosen in him. Always, Jesus always did things right. He, he always is, was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And so as a result, he cleansed us. And by his blood, he cleansed us. And the result of this atoning sacrifice is life not death. You know, it is said that when the high priest went in, they uh, tied a rope around him because he was the only one that could go in and there were uh, little bells put on the skirt of his garment. And as long as they heard the bells, um, they knew that he was moving. And as long as he was moving, everything was okay. But they understood that if he stopped moving. If he didn't hear the bells, then the sacrifice may not have been accepted or was not accepted. And, and, he, and that high priest found himself dead. And they couldn't go in and get him, so they used the rope to pull him out. But as I said before, Jesus goes in and God accepts it. While the Holy of Holies, if you know anything about it, it was a 15 by 15 by 15 room. That was the dimensions of it. Uh, one room, and listen to this, into three equal parts. One room into three, divided into three equal parts. Um, the ark was in there. The ark was constructed by the order of God and, and held the testimony, that is, the commandments, the instructions of God. And later, uh, they also placed the golden jar of manna in the ark and, and Aaron's rod that budded. It was also placed there. And these things became a symbol to the people of God as a manifested presence of God. These things symbolized something to them and it reminded them of something of the manifested. When I say manifested, I mean a deliberate experience with God, a, a, a certain absolute knowingness that you are in the presence of God and God is right there with you. And in 
God's manifested presence as we walk in that understanding, as we move in that, as we embrace what Paul uh, said to those folks when it came to the unknown gods and feeling for and looking for. He said, let me tell you about this God you may not know about. And later on, he goes on to say that in him you move and live and have your being. He's an ever-present God. He's always present. There's no way you can go that he is not. But here's what salvation does for us. Here's what, here's what is a benefit of salvation. We become aware of his presence. What happens for many folks is that they are not aware that God is present, that there is a manifested presence and an experience with God right now. And so as a result, they're living their lives like they don't have any, any, any care in the world. They, they're just doing whatever they think they're big enough to do. It doesn't matter. They have no conscience. That's because they are not aware of the presence of God. And so here we are. In there, there were instructions. There were provisions in that holy of holies, in that place, in that place where the presence of God was. You'll never lack anything. You'll never be without. There were instructions, provisions, and security. The lid or the cover on the ark was called the mercy seat. That's the Lord's judgment and punishment is diverted or deflected because of his mercies. We are not consumed because of the mercies of our God. Our sins are washed away. They're forgiven because the Lord has mercy on us. Mercy on us. By his mercy, by his mercy, we ought to uh, walk in humility, not arrogance, because of his mercy. And by his mercy in our lives, it empowers us to walk in humility. Not arrogance, not low self-esteem. We don't go from one extreme to the other, but we hold our heads up. We throw our shoulders back and we begin to walk in confidence. Why? Because of salvation, there are the, I have the opportunity to have experiences with God. God is not just some figment of my imagination, but he is a very present help. And I, I live and move and have my being in him. And there are very tangible expressions and demonstrations of God's presence in my life as a result of this salvation. Benefits. Benefits of salvation. The presence of the Lord must be handled with proper attitude. Uh, back in the scriptures, uh, we talked about the idea that the ark was symbol, uh, or a symbol of God's presence. And so they couldn't handle the, the ark just any kind of way. God had specific instruct, instructions as to how to carry his presence. Oh, guys. And it still holds true. You can't handle God's presence just any kind of way. That's why the Bible talks about when it uses the word fear, fear the Lord. It doesn't mean afraid. It means reverence, respect. And so there's, there's a way that you have to do it. The, the ark, um, the presence of the Lord, uh, it's not some kind of good luck charm. You know, uh, looking at my notes here, Israel had the ark, but they suffered defeat. You remember at Ai, uh, in Joshua chapter 7, uh, Ai defeats them. But Ai defeats them because they think they can do it on their own. They're not handling 
the presence of the Lord with reverence. They've just had a, a big victory. And so now they've forgotten that this is the Lord's doing. And what we're enjoying and experience is the result of God's presence in our life. And instead, they think they can do it on their own. They go to little old AI. You know the story. The Bible says that AI whipped them hip and thigh. It's pretty bad whipping. But now watch this. Even after that, they still don't, don't really get themselves together and they still handle it or mishandle God's presence. Let me, let me bring this other one up. The Philistines defeat them. Uh, and this, this is due to the wickedness of these two brothers. Hophni and Phineas. Phineas. Now listen to the and, and, and listen to the character of these two young men. Hophni means to 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 fight with he's 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 a he's a fighter, rebellious. Phineas means a mouth of brass or a mouth of a serpent. And listen to this. Both of these people were known for their brutality, their lust, and the misuse of offerings. You and I don't want to disrespect the presence of the Lord in our lives. If you want to read that, go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. It talks about that also go to first cha first Samuel chapter four verses one through eleven and it talks about it uh, in, even some more in detail the manifested presence of God the glory cloud the Shekinah we we have access to that we we have a spiritual awakening that allows us to recognize and to acknowledge that in our lives, in everyday experiences. Our God is, is nearer than breathing, closer than hands or feet. He is the very source of our being. And as a result of that, um, I am... As we first said, I am empowered. I have access to the power of God. And now I have access to a manifested expression and presence of God so that I am not wondering, I'm not hoping, I'm not wishing in vain, but God is present. And so... I begin to experience uh, and see and acknowledge his hand in my life's affairs because indeed he leads and he guides me. I don't have luck. I don't have chance. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. And you're in places, I'm in places, and there I experience the manifested presence of God. And brothers and sisters, all through scripture, you can read the accounts of, of men, women of God, who when they found themselves in difficulties, when they found themselves um, in calamity, uh, we like to say it, that the Lord showed up that he became present. They had some tangible expression of the almighty God in their life. I would like to suggest to you that God is the same God. He is doing the same thing. He is always making himself known in the lives of his people. What we have to do is bear down in the sense of our convictions about the word of God and the truth of God and begin to pursue God and continue to walk with God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. 
seek him, he says. If you seek me in that kind of manner, what happens? I'll be found. We want to grow in our relationship and understanding of what God has for us so much so that we move from his hand and we can know him and see him and be called a friend of God because we can see him face to face. It's available. It's available. The problem is that... Um, we don't see that as a benefit of salvation. We're still uh, sometimes moved by um, this pseudo religion that is just permeating the earth at this time. This gospel that really is not a gospel, just a feel good story and with a bunch of empty promises and things that keep you living mm, on the cusp of the world and its destruction. Come on into the kingdom. You've been saved. Don't go back. Don't. It, it doesn't. It's going to pale. It wears out. It gets old. Store up your treasures. Make those things that are really valuable to you. Let them be found in the kingdom of God. Let them be found on another, another plane, another realm. Let them be found in this new life that God has called you to. Let them be found in the very presence of God. For the scripture says, in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. When you are saved, he puts you in a place of favor with him. What could be more advantageous to you and I than to have a life of favor with God? If you're saved, that is a benefit. So let me encourage you, brothers and sisters, enjoy your salvation. God bless you. And so it begins an epic story of mankind inspired by new events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief happening on every dimension, but I am just restitution and relief and there'll be a case